Nathan did address the members of parliament, that is both the senators and the members of the National Assembly. It is significant to note that uh, Kenya is seeking to renew its relations with her neighbor Tanzania. Of course, these two countries are already joined under the East African Legislative Assembly, where Kenyan lawmakers, as well as those drawn from the East African community, do assemble and legislate laws that are for the betterment of this East African region. When she did meet the president of Kenya, the president of Tanzania did indicate that uh, she intends to ensure that both countries enjoy cordial relations, relations that date back years. And going forward, the two countries can work on ways of accelerating growth in the amount of trade between these two countries. Of course, this particular visit is also significant considering the fight that Kenya has been waging against the COVID-19 pandemic. President Samia and President Uhuru Kenyatta have agreed that both countries will be finding ways to mutually deal with the war on COVID-19 and ensure that movement, cross-border movement between Kenya and Tanzania is smooth and that it shall not be hindered in any way by the global pandemic which continues to ravage the globe as a whole. Both countries have not been exempted from the effects of the coronavirus pandemic despite their different approach to this global pandemic. But a couple of weeks ago, the president of Tanzania did announce that uh, she would form a committee of experts to look into the COVID-19 pandemic. Of, Ke of course, Kenya has been on this for one year now, and the country has been able to make some strides in the war against the coronavirus pandemic. This joint sitting, to some extent as well, is observing the COVID-19 containment protocols by the Ministry of Health. The National Assembly and the Senate have been holding a series of special sittings, and we have seen during those special sittings the houses have been able to observe strictly these protocols by the Ministry of Health. The Parliamentary Service Commission is playing a leading role in ensuring that the country is able to stem the spread of this global pandemic, which has negatively impacted not just the Kenyan economy, but the global economy. Countries have been coming up with ways, different ways, of dealing with the effects of the global pandemic. Any moment now, we will see the president of the United Republic of Tanzania, President Samia Suluhu Hassan, she will make her way to the National Assembly Chambers. Of course, this chamber is big enough to accommodate members of parliament, both from the Senate and the National Assembly. She will approach the chamber uh, from the Senate entrance and make her way past the National Assembly Members' Lounge into the National Assembly Chambers. Uh, that is uh, something that we will be able to see any moment now. She has been meeting various stakeholders in the business industry. She, alongside President Uhuru Kenyatta earlier today, did meet business communities drawn from Kenya and Tanzania uh, where proposals were made and uh, there were pledges to adopt those proposals. Of course, Kenya and Tanzania are big partners, trade partners, and this 
visit by the president of Tanzania is significant and is aimed at improving trade and other areas of cooperation between the two countries. Standing order number 25 of the National Assembly permits this particular sitting. So does standing order 26 of the Senate. This broadcast is brought to you by the Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit in conjunction with the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. In the history of the Kenyan Parliament, Honorable President Samia Suluhu becomes the second president to address Parliament after her counterpart, President Jakaya Kikwete, addressed the 11th Parliament on October 6th, 2015. President Suluhu's much-anticipated speech is in accordance with Standing Order 25 of the National Assembly and 26 of the Senate Standing Orders. And uh, the President of Tanzania is already within the pressings of Parliament and she will be making her way into the National Assembly Chambers to address this joint sitting of Parliament. There we see some members of Parliament making their way into the National Assembly Chambers. Uh, some have already made their way into the chambers. They will be taking they will be taking their seats as soon as the president of Tanzania walks into the chambers of the National Assembly, which is playing host to this joint sitting of parliament, a historic address by the president of the Republic of Tanzania. Of course, such an address was accommodated after the promulgation of the 2010 constitution that allows visiting dignitaries to address a joint sitting of the parliament of Kenya. These uh, dignitaries, they include probably the heads of state, visiting heads of state or other such visiting dignitaries. They are permitted by the standing orders to address a joint sitting of parliament. President Goodluck Jonathan, former president of uh, Nigeria, did address a joint sitting of members of the National Assembly and members of parliament. And after that, the standing orders of parliament were amended to allow a head of state or a visiting dignitary to address a joint sitting of parliament. The former president of Tanzania, President Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete, did address a joint sitting of parliament on October 6, 2015. And Honorable Samia Sulu Hassan becomes the second president to address parliament after former president of Tanzania, Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete. So it is a historic moment, not just for Kenyan parliament, but for the East African community as well. This address is also significant, considering that some former members of parliament, Kenyan members of parliament, were elected to the East African Legislative Assembly and there with along or alongside their counterparts drawn from Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania. They legislate laws that are geared towards improving the welfare of the East African community. Over the last couple of months we have seen 
um, leaders drawn from the East African community championing the growth of this block, advancing ideas that will enable facilitation of trade between these countries, the free flow of goods and people between these countries has also been a priority. And the Parliament of Kenya being at the forefront in legislating laws that will enable Kenya participate in matters trade and other bilateral relations with our neighbors, this address is significant and we will be waiting to see uh, what sort of proposals and suggestions will be issued by the president of Tanzania who is on a two-day state visit to the country. President Samia Suluhu Hassan arrived in Kenya yesterday where she met President Uhuru Kenyatta at State House. The two leaders did a pledge to foster good working relationships between the two countries, renewed cordial relations between the two countries. Any moment now, the president of Tanzania will make her way into the chamber where she will give that historic address a much anticipated speech in accordance with the standing orders number 25 of the national assembly and number 26 of the senate the standing orders guide business of both houses and the tw number 25 of the national assembly and number 26 of the Senate state that the Speaker may, in consultation with the leader of the majority party and the leader of the minority party, allow a visiting head of state or other such visiting dignitary to address the Assembly and may, in consultation with the Speaker of the Senate, arrange for a joint sitting of Parliament for purposes of an address by such visiting head of state or such other visiting dignitary. Uh, there on your screen, uh, there's a, uh, there is the leader of the majority party, Honorable Emos Kimunya, making, her way, making his way into the chamber, I beg your pardon, uh, signaling the imminent arrival of the president of Tanzania. If you're just joining us, we are waiting for the convening of a joint sitting of parliament where the president of Tanzania, Honorable Samir Sulu Hassan, will be addressing the joint sitting, the members of the National Assembly and senators are converging in the National Assembly Chamber and they will be keenly listening to the address the message of the Tanzanian people courtesy of the President of Tanzania Honorable Samia Sulu Hassan who is about to make history as the second president to address Parliament after former President of Tanzania, Jakaya Mrishu Kikwete, who addressed the 11th Parliament on October 6, 2015. The visiting Tanzanian president became the head of state following the device of former President John Pombe Magufuli Honorable Samir Sulu Hassan until 2021 was the Vice President of Tanzania but following the death of former President John Pombe Magufuli and in accordance with the Constitution 
of the Republic of Tanzania. She was sworn into office as the new president of the United Republic of Tanzania. Since then, she has stated severally that she intends to foster good working relationship with neighbors of Tanzania, among them Kenya. And this provides her another opportunity to stress that point that Tanzania and Kenya will continue to foster good relationship and ensure that both countries enjoy the fruits of the East African community, a block that has been in existence for quite a while. But the real fruits of this particular block are yet to be achieved, but through cooperation and intense consultations, both countries, Kenya and Tanzania, are hopeful that those fruits will be seen sooner rather than later. So through this address, uh, perhaps the two countries will cement that commitment and we do It is important to mention that uh, prior to the 2010 Constitution, prior to the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution, the standing orders of the National Assembly did not provide for an address by a visiting dignitary. But after the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution and after the address by former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan to members of parliament and senators, the standing orders of the National Assembly and the standing orders of the Senate were amended to accommodate visiting dignitaries. This include heads of state or other such visiting dignitaries to address the assembly and may, in consultation with the Speaker of the Senate, of course, this standing order speaks to a requirement by the Speaker of the National Assembly and that of the Senate to convene such a sitting. The both speakers did gazette the sitting, which is about to take place in the next couple of minutes. On your screen is uh, the corridor and there is some activity. Sergeant at arms followed by the two maces of the National Assembly and the Senate followed by the clerks of the National Assembly and the speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate, the President of the Republic of Tanzania, Honorable Samia Sulu Hassan, flanked by Honorable Justin Muturi and Honorable <laughs> Kenneth Makele Lusaka, is making her way into the chamber of the National Assembly to give a historic address. She becomes the second president to address parliament after former president of Tanzania, Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete. Now, I will hand you over for this historic joint sitting of the parliament of Kenya. My name is Edward Kabasa. Enjoy your viewing.
na msikilizaji nyimbo hizo zikipigwa pale sijui hao wabendi wa wana nini maana zikipigwa hizo nyimbo kuna hisia fulani na tuombe ewe mwenyezi Mungu twakusii ututazame kwa neema nyingi na baraka sisi watumishi wako ambao umeridhika kutuita kwa nyadhifa za uongozi katika jamhuri hii yetu twakuomba utujalie tuyatende na kufiki, kufikiria mambo yote yatakayofikishwa mbele yetu kwa njia ya haki na uaminifu ili kustawisha amani ufanisi na heri ya inji hii yetu na wale ambao haja zao umesikabidhi mikononi mwetu amen Mheshimiwa Mtukufu Rais Samia Suluhu Hassan Rais wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania Speaker wa Bunge la Taifa Mheshimiwa Justin Muturi Waheshimiwa wa Bunge kuambatana na kanuni ya kudumu ya 25 aya ya kwanza ya kanuni za, ku, za kudumu za Bunge la Taifa na kanuni za kudumu ya 26 aya ya pili ya kanuni za kudumu za seneti zinazohusu hotuba za wageni mashuhuri maspika wa bunge walipokea ombi la kuhusu mheshimiwa mtukufu rais Samia Suluhu Hassan rais wa jamhuri ya muungano wa Tanzania ambaye yuko hapa katika ziara rasmi ya kitaifa nchini Kenya kuhutubia kikao cha kikao cha pamoja cha bunge Waheshimiwa wa bunge, maspika wa bunge wakitia ombi hilo wameitisha kikao hiki cha pamoja cha bunge nilitoa arifa ya kikao hiki cha pamoja kupitia gazeti rasmi la serikali arifa nambari elfu mbili ya tarehe Mei tatu mwaka elfu mbili mwaka 2021 kwa waheshimiwa maseneta hiyo basi hiyo basi waheshimiwa wabunge kikao hiki maalum kimeitishwa kwa njia inayofaa asanteni sana yes, Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, the Honorable, speak, the Honorable Speaker of the Senate, Senator Kenneth Lusaka. Honorable Members of Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to provisions of Standing Order Number 25, Subsection 1 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, relating to address by visiting dignitaries i received a request to accord an opportunity to Her excellency samia sulu hassan president of the republic united republic of tanzania who is on a state visit to kenya on invitation by his excellency honorable uhuru kenyatta president of the republic of kenya and commander in chief of the kenya defense forces to address our parliament honorable members having acceded to the request the Speaker of the Senate and I convened this joint sitting of the Houses of Parliament. Subsequently, I gave notice to the joint, of the joint sitting through Kenya Gazette Notice Number 4199, dated 3rd of May 2021, to the members of the National Assembly. In this respect, Honourable Members, I also declare this joint sitting of the Houses of Parliament properly convened. Honourable members, may I recognize the delegation of cabinet ministers and senior officials 
from the United Republic of Tanzania who are accompanying Her Excellency the President of the United Republic of Tanzania and who are also present in Parliament this afternoon. May I also recognize cabinet secretaries and other senior officials from our government who are accompanying Her Excellency to Parliament today. <laughs> These distinguished guests are seated in the speaker's room, in others in the diplomatic boxes and the speaker's gallery. Please join me, honorable members, in welcoming them to Parliament in our usual way. <laughs> honorable members, distinguished guests, as you are aware, since independence, up to until this afternoon, only one other visiting hand of state has had the honor of addressing a joint sitting of the Houses of Parliament of the Republic of Kenya. <laughs> this was His Excellency Dr. Jakam Murisho Kikwete, the then President of the United Republic of Tanzania, who addressed Parliament on Tuesday, 6th of October, 2015. Today's address by Her Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, will be the second address by a visiting head of state. <laughs> now, members, this is a clear attestation of the deep and special relations that our two countries enjoy and the high esteem with which our parliament holds the leadership and the people of the United Republic of Tanzania. Honourable members, it is now my honour and privilege to invite Our Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, to address this joint sitting of Parliament of Kenya. Welcome, Your Excellency. Mwishmiwa Justin Muturi, Speaker wa Bunge la Taifa, Mwishmiwa Kenneth Lusaka, Speaker wa Bunge la Seneti, Mwishmiwa wa Bunge la Taifa na Seneti, Viongozi mbalimbali wa Serikali wa Tanzania na Kenya mliopo pamoja nasi, Wageni walikuwa mabibi na mabwana, Habari za mchana. Mheshimiwa maspika nianze kwa kumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu mwingi wa rehema kwa kutujalia afya na uhai na kutupa kibali kilichotuwezesha kukutana hapa siku ya leo. Nina furaha kubwa leo hii kupata nafasi ya kutubia kikao cha pamoja cha bunge la taifa na bunge la seneti la Jamhuri ya Kenya. Kabla sijaendelea Niruhusu nitanguliza shukrani zangu kwako Mheshimiwa Kenneth Lusaka, Speaker wa Bunge la Seneti na Mheshimiwa Justin Muturi, Speaker wa Bunge la Taifa kwa kuitisha kikao hiki cha pamoja cha bunge na kunialika mimi kuhutubia. Kupitia kwenu, niwashukuru Mheshimiwa wa Bunge na Mheshimiwa wa Seneta kwa kuridhia kwa kauli moja kufanyika kwa kikao hiki. Asanteni sana. Najiona mwenye bahati kubwa kupewa heshima hii adhimu na ya kipekee kama alivyosema mheshimiwa spika kwamba aliyewahi kuhutubia hapa ni mheshimiwa Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete toka Tanzania na mimi ni wa pili ni bahati kubwa sana Natambua fika kuwa husi utaratibu wa kawaida wa Kenya Sikila rais anayefanya ziara rasmi upewa heshima hii ya kuhutubia bunge. Tena kikao cha pamoja mabunge yenu mawili. Wenzetu mna bunge lenye chemba mbili, sisi wenzenu tuna bunge moja tu. Kwangu itakuwa ndio mara ya kwanza kutubia chemba mbili za bunge kwa pamoja. 
si jambo dogo na ni heshima kubwa iliyoje mmenipa heshima kubwa sana nimefarijika kuwa nimepata nafasi hii mwanzoni mwa uongozi wangu niseme kuwa kumbukumbu kumbu hii haitofutika kwenye maisha yangu asanteni sana Uamuzi wenu wa kunipa fursa hii ni kielelezo cha thamani na uzito ambao mnaupa uhusiano mzuri uliopo kati ya nchi zetu mbili. Niwahakikishieni kuwa nasi tumeguswa sana na heshima, upendo na ukarimu mkubwa ambao umetuonesha. Wema kuacha deni na deni lake ni kulipwa kwa wema. Na sisi Tanzania tutalipa wema huu. Washima maspika, washima maseneta na wabunge. Sitatenda haki nisipomshukuru kipekee kaka yangu, ndugu yangu, Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya, Mheshimiwa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta. Rais Kenyatta ni miongoni mwa viongozi wa mwanzo kabisa. Alienipigia simu kunifariji mara tu baada ya kusikia taarifa ya kifo cha aliyekuwa rais wetu mpendwa, Hayati Mheshimiwa Dr. Magufuli kama haikutosha hakusita kukatisha ratiba yake na kuweza kufika yeye binafsi kushiriki nasi katika msiba wa kitaifa kule Dodoma siku ile alitufariji sana kwa maneno yake na salamu zake za buriani kutoka kwa wananchi wa Kenya hatutasahau pia kwa kitendo chake cha kutukumbusha umuhimu wa kuheshimu dini na imani za wengine Mheshimiwa Uhuru Kenyatta alisitisha kuhutubia akiwa jukwani ili kupisha adhana iliyokuwa ikisomwa msikitini imalizike na ndio aliendelea. Alituachia gumzo kubwa na funzo kubwa sana kwetu. Alitumia jukwaa lile kunipongeza kwa kushika dhamana hii ya rais ya awamu ya sita wa Tanzania na aliahidi kunialika nchini Kenya mara baada ya kipindi cha maombolezo kumalizika. Rais Kenyatta ni mtu wa kutimiza ahadi. Mara tu baada ya kumalizika kipindi cha maombolezo, alinitumia ujumbe maalum kuniona ambao pia uliambatana na mwaliko wa kutembelea nchini Kenya. Nami nimekuja Kenya kuitikia wito wake. Mimi na ujumbe wangu tumepata mapokezi mazuri sana toka tumewasili jijini Nairobi. Tumesikia, tumejisikia tuko nyumbani haswa. Tumopokewa kwa ukarimu mkubwa na hiyo ndiyo hulka desturi na asili ya watu wa Kenya. Nimebaini kuwa sehemu kubwa ya ujumbe nilioambatana nao wanajua vichochoro vya Nairobi. wanajua nyama choma inapatikana wapi lakini kutokana na corona hawakuweza kujibamba na hivi nina wasiwasi nisije nikawabakisha nyuma kwa hiyo tunawashukuru kwa yote ndugu zetu kwa mapokezi na ukarimu mkubwa siku ya jana nimefanya kikao na mheshimiwa rais uhuru kenyata na ujumbe wake wa viongozi wa serikali tumekuwa na mazungumzo mazuri na yenye kuamsha matumaini makubwa au makubwa sana kwa mashirikiano kati ya nchi zetu mbili kwa siku zijazo mbele yetu hapakuwa na ugumu wala ukakasi wowote katika kufikia mwafaka wa mambo tuliyokuwa tukijadiliana tumezungumza kwa kindugu sana kichojitokeza uwazi katika mazungumzo yale ni namna ambavyo nchi zetu mbili zinakubaliana katika mambo mengi kuliko yale machache sana tunayotofautiana hata hayo machache tunayotofautiana yenyewe hayakuwa na misingi imara ya tofauti ila ni mitazamo tu ya watu ambao mitazamo mingi inayoleta ukakasi huchangiwa kutokana na kukatika kwa mawasiliano baina ya nchi zetu mbili sasa ili kuondoa mitazamo hasi kati yetu tumekubaliana kujenga na kuendeleza utamaduni wa kukutana mara kwa mara. 
katika ngazi zetu mbali mbali ndugu na jirani wanaotembeleana hujenga ukaribu kuliko wale wasiotembeleana umbali hujenga mashaka na ukaribu huondosha mashaka hayo waheshimiwa maspika waheshimiwa maseneta na wabunge kama nilivyosema hii ni ziara yangu ya kwanza rasmi nchini Kenya tangu kushika wadhifa wa urais wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania tarehe 19 Machi mwaka huu ipendeze kusema kuwa itaingia katika kumbukumbu kumbu za kihistoria kwa Kenya ndiyo nchi ya kwanza kwa rais wa awamu ya sita ya Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania kufanya ziara rasmi nilikwenda Uganda lakini kwa madhumuni maalumu ya kusaini mkataba haikuwa ziara rasmi ziara yangu rasmi ya kwanza nimeanza na Kenya kwa lugha nyingine mguu wangu wa kwanza kutoka nje kwa ziara rasmi umeanza Kenya na nataka niwaambie jana nilikaribishwa iftari na mheshimiwa rais lakini wakati tuko kwenye iftari na baadaye chakula cha usiku kulikuwa kuna dua nyingi sana zimesomwa na baada kumalizika dua mvua ikanyesha ilikuwa baraka kubwa sana Mungu ameweka baraka kwenye ziara yangu na yale yote ambayo tumezungumza kwa hiyo tumshukuru Mungu uamuzi wangu huu wa kuja Kenya kwa nchi ya kwanza si wa bahati mbaya bali ni wa makusudi busara inaelekeza kuwa ukiwa mpangaji mpya kwenye eneo lazima ujitambulishe kwa majirani Nami kwa sababu ni mpangaji mpya kwenye hizo nafasi nimeonelea nije kwa majirani kujitambulisha na nimeanza na jirani wa Kenya ambaye ni jirani ndugu Nilipata mialiko mingi lakini nikasema nianze hapa Nimeanza Kenya si kwa sababu ni karibu kijiografia bali ni kwa sababu ya umuhimu na nafasi ya Kenya kwa Tanzania Uhusiano wa Tanzania na Kenya ni wa kipekee sana. Ni uhusiano uliofungwa katika mafundo matatu. Fundo la kwanza ni udugu wa damu kati ya wananchi wetu wa pande mbili ambao hauwezi kutenganishwa na mipaka ya kuchorwa kwenye ramani. Makabila ya pande mbili za mpaka yanaingiliana na watu wake ni wale wale wa moja. Tanzania inapakana na nchi nane. Lakini ni nchi ya Kenya pekee ndiyo ambayo tuna jamii nyingi au nyingi zaidi zilizopo katika pande mbili za nchi zetu. Kwenye ukumbi huu wa bunge nadhani ndani hapa kuna wakina Otieno, kuna wakina Boke, kuna wakina Namelok kama ilivyo Tanzania. Lakini pia kuna wakina Kilonzo na wakina Kioko kama ilivyo Tanzania. Lakini zaidi kuna Muhammad Faki Mwinihaji. Huyu ni seneta wa Mombasa. Lakini hili ni jina safi la Kizanzibar. Kwa hiyo hatuwezi kutengana. Hii ni mifano michache tu. Fundo la pili ni historia. Kabla hata ya kuanzishwa kwa Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki mwaka 1967 Nchi zetu mbili hizi tayari zisha kuwa chini ya East African Common Service Organization au ESCSO zikiwa chini ya utawala wa kikoloni wa Waingereza. Huduma zetu muhimu, miundombinu yetu na chumi zetu zilifumwa pamoja kabla hata nchi zetu hazijapata uhuru. Fundo la tatu ni geografia. Mwenyezi Mungu amejalia nchi zetu mbili hizi kuwa majirani tuna mipaka ya baharini na mipaka ya ardhini na hata ekolojia yetu ni moja ndio kusema kuwa hata wanyama pori wetu ni ndugu na ni majirani kuna wale wanyama pori wa nani wale eh hey, wanakuja kupata mimba Kenya wanazalia Tanzania Sa 
sasa ingekuwa wanyama wana uraia wangekuwa raia wa wapi wakitoka Serengeti wanaingia Masai Mara kwa hiyo ni pale pale lakini siku hizi hata tausi wetu walioko ikulu Tanzania wana ndugu zao ikulu ya Nairobi kwa hiyo nikusema kwamba kama tausi na wanyama wana undugu sisi wanadamu tunatengana wapi hatuna pa kutengana sasa kutokana na ukweli huu ushirikiano wetu si wa hiari bali ni walazima kutokana na kanuni ya uwasili wa undugu ambao Mwenyezi Mungu ameuumba ushirika na ujirani yote yanatufanya tuwe pamoja hili hatuna uwezo nalo la kubadilisha hili la maumbile hili lililobaki ama tupendane au tuchukiane tuzungumze au tununiane hatuwezi kukwepa kutokana na mafundo haya matatu tulio yaweka pamoja au tuliyowekwa nayo pamoja tunategemea kwa kila hali tunategemeana kwa kila hali iwe heri au iwe shari iwe nema au iwe dhiki tunategemeana panapotokea ukame Tanzania njaa inabisha hodi Kenya panapotokea uzalishaji wa viwanda ukisimama Kenya bidhaa zinakosekana Tanzania kwa hiyo tunategemeana hivyo hapana budi ila tupatane na tuelewane ili tuishi kwa pamoja kwa neema na furaha Waheshimiwa maspika waheshimiwa maseneta na wabunge binafsi huwa nashangazwa sana na wale ambao wanadhani kuwa eti Kenya na Tanzania ni washindani na hivyo uhusiano wetu unapaswa kuwa wa kuhasimiana na kukamiana na washangaa wanaodhani kuwa Kenya peke yake ama Tanzania peke yake inaweza kuendelea bila mwenzake mbaya zaidi ni kule kuamini kwao kwamba hilo linawezekana tu mmoja wetu kumwangusha mwenzake hawa ni watu wenye mioyo ya choyo maono mafupi na akili mbovu ni bahati mbaya kuwa watu hawa wapo katika pande zote mbili Kenya na Tanzania Hutokea pia wachache wao sana. Wakawa ni watumishi wa serikali zetu na hata wanasiasa wa pande mbili za nchi zetu. Bahati nzuri tunikuwa si wengi na ndio maana uhusiano wa nchi zetu mbili unatimiza miaka msina sita sasa. Ukiacha ule uwasili lakini ule wa kiserikali ni miaka msina sita sasa. Kwangu mimi na katika awamu yangu ya uongozi nitahakikisha kuwa Kenya inabaki kuwa ndugu, jirani, mshirika, mshirika wa mkakati na mbia. Kenya ni, kati, ni nchi ya tano kwa nchi zinazoongoza kwa uwekezaji nchini Tanzania. Na ndio nchi ya kwanza ndani ya Afrika inayoongoza kwa uwekezaji nchini Tanzania nyuma ya mataifa makubwa kama Uingereza, Marekani, China na India inakuja Kenya. Takwimu za kituo chetu cha uwekezaji zinaonesha kuwa hadi kufikia March 2021 kuna miradi mingi tu ya Kenya inatekelezwa Tanzania kama 513 kutoka Kenya ambayo inatekelezwa Tanzania na kutoa ajira kwa Tanzania hamsina moja elfu na themanini na saba na kuchangia mapato ya kiasi cha dola za kimarekani bilioni 1.7 Sekta zinazoongoza kwa uwekezaji kutoka Kenya ni uzalishaji viwandani, usafirishaji, kilimo, huduma, benki, ujenzi, rasilimali watu, madini, utalii na mali asili. Kutokana na uhusiano wetu mzuri, kampuni za Tanzania zimewekeza nchini Kenya lakini tumekuja kwa uchache sana. Tuko kama kampuni 25 mpaka 30 zilizosajiliwa na mamlaka ya uwekezaji ya Kenya. 
Miradi hiyo ina thamani ya shilingi bilioni 19.33 za Kenya na kutoa ajira kwa raia kama 2642. So Tanzania tuna deni kubwa kuja Kenya. Lakini pamoja na gap hiyo tulionayo au mapungufu hayo tulionayo bado tunawalika wa Kenya wengi zaidi waje Tanzania kuwekeza. Na tunawalika kwa sababu Tanzania ina mambo mengi. Ina rasilimali za kutosha, madini ya kutosha, ardhi kubwa na mambo mengi mengine. Tunakosa mtaji. Kenya mna mtaji wa kutosha. Karibuni Tanzania. Dhamira yangu ya kuja nchini Kenya ni kuzungumza nanyi na kuona ni kwa namna gani wa Tanzania nao wataweza kufanya vizuri zaidi nchini Kenya. Bali na uwekezaji ushirikiano wetu kwenye sekta ya biashara nao ni mkubwa na umeendelea kushamiri siku hadi siku. Usafirishaji wa bidhaa za Tanzania kwenda Kenya umeongezeka kutoka shilingi za kitanzania bilioni 390.6 mwaka 2017 hadi shilingi za kitanzania bilioni 500 na 26.3 mwaka 2020 kwa upande wa Kenya nayo iliongeza kiwango cha kuuza bidhaa zake nchini Tanzania kutoka shilingi za kitanzania bilioni 420 mwaka 2017 hadi shilingi za kitanzania bilioni 571 mwaka 2020 takwimu hizi zinatusuta sisi viongozi na wanasiasa Zinatuonesha kuwa wananchi wa nchi zetu mbili daima wako hatua mbele mbele yetu. Wanafanya biashara zao kwa ubunifu mkubwa. Lakini sisi tunangangana na sheria na vikwazo na mambo kama hayo na tunawavuta nyuma kidogo. Ni wakati sasa wa sisi viongozi kubadilika. Tuwe daraja la kuanganisha watu wetu na sio tuwe kikwazo au vikwazo kwao. Mimi na ndugu yangu Rais Uhuru Kenyatta tumekubaliana kuweka utaratibu madhubuti wa kuzuia na kukabiliana na zile pirika pirika pale zinazotokea katika mipaka yetu wakati wa kuvusha biashara kwenda na kurudi katika nchi zetu mbili. Waheshimiwa speaker, waheshimiwa maseneta na wabunge, mashirikiano ya uwekezaji na biashara ni sehemu tu ya mashirikiano mazuri kati ya nchi zetu. Utalii ni eneo jingine ambalo tunapaswa kushirikiana sana. Kama nilivyogusia, ikolojia zetu zinaingiliana. Vivyo hivyo ukaribu wa vivutio vyetu vya utalii na vyenyewe vinaingiliana. Tunayo nafasi ya kunemeka pamoja ikiwa tutashirikiana katika sekta hii kuliko kushindana. Badala ya kunyang'anyana idadi ya watalii Busara inatutaka tuelekeze nguvu zetu kuhamasisha mtalii aongeze idadi ya siku ambazo atazitumia nchini Kenya na nchini Tanzania. Kwa kufanya hivyo sote tutafaidika. Kama alivyowahi kusema hayati baba wa taifa Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere alisema na nanukuu tukipoteza muda mwingi kugawana kibaba. Kibaba ni kipimo cha kupimia kama mchele, ngano, sembe. Anasema tukipoteza muda wingi, mwingi kugawana hicho, tutapoteza muda mzuri sana wa kuvuna kipimo kikubwa zaidi. Mashirikiano yetu yanashamirishwa pia na jitihada kubwa tunazochukua katika vita dhidi ya uhalifu, ujangili, uka, ugaidi, madawa ya kulevya na uharamia. Bahari ya Hindi na katika Ziwa Victoria. Mada muhalifu wa Kenya na Tanzania wana mashirikiano mazuri, basi hakuna budi vyombo vyetu vya ulinzi na usalama navyo vishikamane na wewe na mashirikiano mazuri ili tuweza kulinda maeneo yetu na kushinda ushirikiano wa wahalifu. Mashirikiano haya mazuri baina ya vyombo vyetu yamechangia na yatachangia sana kuwepo kwa utulivu na kutoa fursa kwa shughuli za kibiashara na uwekezaji kushamiri. Kenya ikiwa salama na sisi Tanzania tuko salama. Alikadhalika Tanzania ikiwa salama 
Kenya nayo inakuwa salama. Waheshimiwa maspika, waheshimiwa maseneta na wabunge, ujenzi wa miundombinu ya pamoja ni sehemu ya jitihada zetu za kuimarisha mashikiano yetu ya kiuchumi na kimkakati. Miradi hii inajumuisha kwa uchache miradi ifuatayo. Kwanza ni ujenzi wa barabara ya Lami kutoka Lamu Mombasa kupitia Tanga Bagamoyo hadi Dar es Salaam yenye urefu wa kilomita nne chini ya programu ya Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki ya kuendeleza miundombinu wa barabara kwa nchi za Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki. Katika ushoroba wa Pwani yani Coastal Corridor kwa upande wetu tuko mbioni kukamilisha ujenzi wa kipande cha pangani Bagamoyo na barabara za lami zenye urefu wa kilomita 128.5 na tayari tumekushapata fedha kutoka benki ya maendeleo ya Afrika jana nilikuwa na mazungumzo na kakaangu Uhuru naye anamalizia mazungumzo ya kupata fedha ili kazi hii ianze kwa upande wa Kenya na tukutane pale kwenye mpaka Mradi wa pili ni barabara ya Arusha Holili Taveta Voi yenye urefu wa kilomita sitini. Mradi huu ni sehemu ya mradi wa maendeleo ya barabara ya Arusha na Manga Athi River iliyofunguliwa rasmi mwaka 2012. Mradi huu unatekelezwa kwa awamu mbili. Awamu ya kwanza imeshakamilika. Sasa tunajipanga kuendelea na awamu ya pili ya mradi huu. Mradi wa tatu Tunapo vituo vya huduma za pamoja mpakani vya Namanga na Manga OSBP na Holili Taveta OSBP. Vituo hivi vimerahisisha shughuli za biashara mipakani na uvukaji wa watu. Nafurahi kuona vituo hivi vimekuwa chachu ya shughuli za kiuchumi katika maeneo ya mipaka yetu. Tunaendelea na mchakato wa kukamilisha mifumo ya vituo vya horohoro horo, lunga lunga na sirari isebania ili navyo viweze kutoa huduma kwa wepesi na kwa ufanisi mradi wa nne ni wa kusafirisha umeme mkubwa wa kilovolt 400 kwa upande wa Tanzania mradi unahusisha ujenzi wa njia ya kusafirishia umeme kutoka Singida hadi Namanga ujenzi wa kituo kipya cha kupozea umeme mjini Arusha na eneo la Legumur na upanuzi wa kituo cha kupozea umeme cha Singida. Kwa upande wa Kenya, mradi huu unahusisha ujenzi wa njia ya umeme msongo wa kilovat 400 inayojengwa kutoka kituo cha kupozea umeme cha isa, Isinya hadi Namanga yenye urefu wa kilomita 94. Inayounganishwa na njia ya umeme inayojengwa upande wa Tanzania. Benki ya Maendeleo ya Afrika pamoja na shika la maendeleo la Japani zimekubali kuharamia miradi hiyo. Mradi mwingine Mwenyezi Mungu akijalia inshallah. Serikali zetu mbili zitaanza kutekeleza mradi wa bomba la gesi kuitoa gesi Dar es Salaam hadi Mombasa. Mazungumzo ya kutafuta fedha kwa ajili ya mradi huo yanaendelea na tunatarajia atakamilika mapema inavyowezekana. Ndugu zangu Maseneta na wabunge mtakubaliana nami kuwa kwa ukubwa wa miradi hii gharama zake na muundo wake unalazimisha nchi zetu mbili kushirikiana kuzije, kushirikiana kujenga miradi hiyo ni ishara tosha kuwa uhusiano wetu si wa kuishia kesho wala kesho kutwa wala mtondogo serikali zetu zinafanya uwekezaji huo kwa kuamini kuwa Usiano wetu upo vizuri na utaendelea kuwepo daima. Hivi ndivyo majirani na ndugu walioshibana wanavyoishi. Yeyote anayefikiria ama kudhamiria kuleta uhasama baina yetu. Ujumbe kwao ni kuwa Tanzania na Kenya tulikuwepo, tupo na tutaendelea kuwepo. Iwe kiangazi iwe masika, Tanzania na Kenya tupo. Waheshimiwa maspika, waheshimiwa maseneta na wabunge. Sote tunafahamu kwamba dunia inakabiliwa na janga kubwa la ugonjwa wa corona ambalo limeathiri kasi ya ukuaji wa uchumi wa nchi zetu na limepelekea kwa sehemu kubwa 
kutulazimisha kubadili mfumo wetu wa maisha. Nilikuwa naongea asubuhi na wafanyabiashara. Nikawaambia hivi tunavyoishi sasa sa, hivi wote tumeziba midomo na pua. Uko nyuma kabla kuja corona na kule vijijini kwetu. Mtindo huu tulikuwa tunawafanyia mbuzi tunavowapeleka kwenye kwenda kula ili wasile mazao ya watu njiani tunawafunga Leo corona imebadilisha mfumo wa maisha wanadamu ndio tunajifunga Huyu ni adui kwetu Tunatambua kwamba kila nchi ikiwemo Tanzania imejiwekea utaratibu wa kupambana na janga hili kulingana na mazingira yake mahsusi na hali ya kusambaa kwa ugonjwa huo katika nchi hizo. Niliwaeleza watanzania katika utuba yangu, katika bunge la nchi yetu, na napenda kurejea hapa kwamba sisi Tanzania sio kisiwa. Tunaishi kama sehemu ya familia ya jumuiya ya kimataifa. Kwa maana hiyo, kupitia kamati ya wataalamu nilioiunda, tumeanza mchakato wa kutafakari mbinu zaidi za kukabiliana na janga hili. Wakati tunaendelea kusubiri mapendekezo ya wataalamu na hatua za kuchukua tahadhari zote ikiwemo kusitisha baadhi ya safari kwenye maeneo ya milipuko zinachukuliwa kwa wavyo vyote vile itakavyopendekezwa jambo ambalo nina hakika nalo ni kwamba lazima tushirikiane na jirani zetu ikiwemo Kenya katika kukabiliana na janga hili Mapambano dhidi ya janga hili yanapaswa kutuleta pamoja na sio kutufarakanisha. Ni imani yangu kwamba tukiweka jitihada zetu na maarifa yetu pamoja, basi tutakabiliana na janga hili bila uoga na tutashinda na maisha ya wananchi yetu yataendelea kuwa ya kawaida. Huku tukichukua hadhari za kutosha. Waheshimiwa uh, speaker, waheshimiwa maseneta na wabunge Hatuwezi kuelezea uhusiano wetu mzuri bila kutambua au vizuri bila kutambua uhusiano wa mabunge yetu ya nchi mbili. Umekuwa ni uhusiano mzuri wa majira yote. Nitumie fursa hii kufikisha kwenu shukrani za dhati na salamu kutoka bunge la Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Na watanzania wote kwa kuungana nasi na kutufariji katika kipindi kigumu cha msiba wa hayati mpendwa wetu Rais Dr. John Pombe Magufuli. Mlitufuta machozi na mlitufariji sana. Tuliguswa sana na uamuzi wa bunge la Senate kupitia kikao chake cha tarehe 24 Machi 2021 kujadili na kusajili kwenye kumbukumbu za bunge salamu maalum za rambi rambi kufuatia kifo cha hayati dr magufuli tunawashukuru sana nafahamu pia viongozi wa mihimili mitatu ya serikali ya Kenya ukiwemo wewe mheshimiwa speaker na mheshimiwa speaker wa bunge la seneti mheshimiwa Kenneth Lusaka mlitembelea makazi ya balozi wetu kutoa salamu za pole sisi wa Tanzania tulifarijika sana kwa kuwa nasi wakati wa majonzi Hatuna la kuwalipa ndugu zetu wa Kenya zaidi ya kusema Mungu awabariki sana. Wakati wa msiba na dhiki ndio wakati unapomjua ndugu yako wa kweli na jirani zako wa majira yote. Mlitudhihirishia bila chembe ya shaka kwa ninyi ndugu zetu wa shida na raha. Asanteni sana. Ndugu zangu wa bunge sisi ni wafuatiliaji wakubwa wa mikutano ya bunge la Kenya. Mimi binafsi huwa napenda kusikiliza bunge la Kenya. Tunafanya hivyo kwa kuwa yanayojadiliwa humu nasi yanatuhusu. Niseme tu kuwa bunge la seneti la Kenya na bunge la taifa la Kenya linatusisimua kwa mengi. Tunafurahia upano wa demokrasia yake, uzito wa mijadala yake na hamasa ya wabunge wake. Tulifurahishwa zaidi na uamuzi wenu wa kwanza kutumia lugha ya Kiswahili ndani ya bunge. 
Na ndicho kinachonifanya mimi nisikilize bunge la Kenya. Na enjoy kile Kiswahili kile. Kiswahili chenu kina vionjo vingi, kuna vionjo vyake. Ambavyo peke yake ni burudani tosha kusikiliza. Nilikuwa namsikiliza mheshimiwa speaker anavyoshindwa kutaja namba za miaka. Kwa Kiswahili. Lakini inafurahisha kwamba mlisha tunga kanuni za bunge kwa Kiswahili na mkamwalika mheshimiwa Job Ndugai kuja kuzindua ka, kanuni zile tarehe moja Oktoba 2019. Hii inatia moyo kwamba tuko pamoja na kweli mnataka kutumia Kiswahili lakini hatua kwa hatua. Rai yangu kwenu ni kuomba mtusaidie kulea uhusiano wetu mzuri ndugu zangu wa bunge. Nasema hivyo nikitambua kuwa ninyi ndio wawakilishi wa wananchi na ndio sauti yao wananchi wa Kenya. Ninyi ndio wenye dhamana ya kutunga sheria na kushauri serikali juu ya mwelekeo wa sera na kuongoza wananchi wenu walio wachagua. Dhima yenu katika kukuza ushirikiano baina nchi zetu mbili ni kubwa sana. Mna uwezo mkubwa wa kuamua kasi ya ushirikiano wetu iwe ya haraka ama ya kusuasua kwa aina ya sheria mtakazozitunga na sera mtakazozipitisha. Dira na mwelekeo wa serikali ya awamu ya sita inayoiongoza ni kudumisha mazuri ya awamu zilizopita kuyaendeleza mema yaliyopo na kuleta mazuri mengine mapya. Hivyo nimekuja kuahidi kuwa chini ya uongozi wangu mimi na wenzangu katika serikali ya Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania tutafanya kila linalowezekana kuimarisha uhusiano kati ya nchi zetu mbili. Kama kuna linalolegalega au uhusiano wetu kama unasuasua basi nimekuja hapa Kenya ili kupakazi, kupakazia hmm. nimekuja Kenya ili kukazia yale ambayo yamelegalega na nimekuja kuyanyoosha yale ambayo yalikuwa yamejipinda pinda hivi leo mtasoma Kiswahili waheshimiwa wa speaker na waheshimiwa wa maseneta wa bunge Tanzania na Kenya ni wanachama ni wanachama na wasisi wa Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki. Nchi zetu mbili ndizo zenye eneo kubwa kijiografia na idadi kubwa ya watu na milango pekee ya bahari kwa nchi zingine za Afrika Mashariki. Ukweli huu unakuja na wajibu na dhima kubwa kwa nchi zetu mbili. Uhusiano wa nchi zetu mbili ukishamiri Afrika Mashariki nzima itashamiri Biashara kati yetu ikistawi Afrika Mashariki nzima inastawi. Hivyo basi hatuna budi nchi zetu mbili kutambua wajibu wetu na dhima yetu hiyo kwa upande huu Mungu alikotuumbia Afrika Mashariki. Tunapaswa tutambue kuwa kila mara tunapo tunapotokea kuelewana kila mara panapotokea kutoelewana kati yetu tunadhoofisha jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki bila kukusudia tunajikuta pia tunaathiri kasi ya utangamano wa Afrika Mashariki hivyo hatuna budi kuendelea kuelewana nikiri kwamba kuna nyakati ambapo ushirikiano wa Afrika Mashariki ulijaribiwa ambapo baadhi ya matukio kauli na vitendo vyetu viliweka majaribuni mahusiano yetu na kuupima uimara wa dhamira zetu za kuendelea na safari yetu ya utangamano. Ninachofarijika ni kwamba katika nyakati zote hizo kwa busara za viongozi walio tutangulia na kwa uimara wa mafundo ya uhusiano wetu tulishinda na dhamira yetu ilimarika zaidi. Uchungu wowote uliojitokeza pale ambapo tulijaribiwa ulikuwa ni uchungu wa uzazi na sio uchungu wa maradhi. Kwa maana kwamba Uchungu wa uzazi unaishia kupata mtoto na unaleta furaha kwenye familia. Lakini uchungu wa maradhi unaishia kwenye kifo. 
Kwa hiyo sisi tunapokerana huo uchungu wa uzazi. Tukae tuzungumze na tupate mtoto amani tuendelee na uhusiano wetu. Ni wahakikishie kuwa mimi na wenzangu nchini Tanzania tutafanya kila linalowezekana ili uhusiano wetu uzidi kung'aa na kwa kufanya hivyo tungaarisha ushirikiano wa Afrika Mashariki. Tanzania itaendelea kuwa jirani mbia na rafiki mwaminifu wa Kenya na mwanachama mwadilifu na wakutumainiwa ndani ya jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki. Jitihada zangu na wenzangu katika serikali inayoiongoza zitaelekezwa katika kuimarisha ushirikiano wetu ndani ya jumuiya yetu. Tutaelekeza jitihada zetu katika kutafuta majawabu palipo na changamoto, kufufua fursa palipo na vikwazo na kuleta matumaini palipo na mashaka. Tutafanya hivyo kwa kuamini kwa dhati kabisa kuwa wana Afrika Mashariki hatima yetu imefungamana nasi hatuna budi tufungamane ombi langu kwenu washimo wa bunge kama nilivyosema awali mtusaidie kutimiza azma hiyo sisi tulioko serikalini mtusukume tutekeleze wajibu wetu huu wadhimu na pale tunapozuba zuba msisite kutukosoa nanyi pia tunawaomba mtimize wajibu wenu Mtusaidie kutunga sheria na kushawishi serikali zetu kuhusu sera zinazochochea na kuwezesha mtangamano. Tusiruhusu na tukemee misimamo, mitazamo na kauli za baadhi ya wanasiasa ndani ya mabunge yetu ya kuleta mgawanyiko na kudhoofisha jumuiya yetu. Daima tuwatangulie wafanya biashara na wananchi wetu katika utangamano na kuwaongoza badala ya wao wananchi wetu kutuongoza sisi yanayotokea sasa hivi wafanya biashara wako mbele kuliko sisi kwa sisi sasa inabidi tutunge sera na sheria kuendana na mwenendo wafanya biashara lakini inavyotakiwa tutunge sera na sheria wafanya biashara wafate sera na sheria zetu uh, nasema hayo kwa sababu falsafa zinasema kuongoza ni kuongoza ni kuonyesha njia na sio kufunga njia kwa sisi kama viongozi viongozi wa serikali viongozi wa mabunge viongozi kwenye makama zetu tuoneshe wananchi zetu njia na tusiwafungie njia za maendeleo na njia za usawi wao waheshimiwa maspika waheshimiwa maseneta na wabunge Nihitimishe hotuba yangu na niseme kwamba kama mnavyojua moyo ukielemewa na furaha furaha ya moyoni hutoka kwa mdomoni ningetamani kuendelea kuzungumza nanyi kwa kirefu zaidi kueleza furaha yangu kwa upendo mkubwa mlionionyesha ukarimu mkubwa mliotufanyia mimi na delegation yangu ujumbe wangu na heshima kubwa mlionipa isitoshe tunapokutana Tanzania na Kenya tunakuwa na maneno mengi sana ya kuzungumza hayaishi na hii ni kutokana na ukubwa na uzito wa uhusiano wa nchi zetu mbili sasa nataka nisiseme naishia hapa niseme mniruhusu niakhirishe maneno yangu hapa kwa sababu nitakuja kusema maneno mengine mbele tukikutana. Kwa hiyo nisiishii hapa na akhirisha maneno yangu hapa. Tunapokutana wa Tanzania na wa Kenya kuna mambo mengi. Utani unakuwa umo umo. Vijembe viko umo umo. Ndio mambo yanayochangamsha uhusiano wetu. Sina shaka kuwa tutapata fursa ya kuyazungumza mengi zaidi na kwa kina katika majukwaa mengine tutakayokutana. Nitumie fursa hii kumshukuru kwa mara nyingine tena kuwashukuru waheshimiwa maspika kwa mara nyingine tena kwa kunikaribisha lakini nimshukuru mheshimiwa uhuru Kenyata kwa mwaliko wa kuniomba mimi kufanya ziara hii rasmi ya kiserikali nchini Kenya nataka ni wa 
thibitishie kwamba ziara hii tumevuna mengi na makubwa sana mengi na makubwa sana imefungua milango mingi sana lililobaki mtusimamie kwenye utekelezaji lakini nami nimemwalika mheshimiwa uhuru kenyata aje Tanzania Tanzania mwaka huu Disemba tunatimiza miaka sitini ya uhuru. Kwa hiyo nimemwalika Mheshimiwa Uhuru Kenyatta aje kwenye sherehe hizo kama mgeni wetu maalum. Nitumie pia fursa hii kama nilivyosema kushukuru maspika Mheshimiwa Kenneth Lusaka na Mheshimiwa Justin Muturi kwa makaribisho yenu mazuri sana ndani ya bunge niwashukuru washimu wa bunge na maseneta kwa kutenga muda wenu wazimu kunikaribisha kuzungumza nanyi kupitia kwenu niwashukuru ndugu zetu wananchi wa Kenya kwa mapokezi mazuri waliotupatia tunaondoka Kenya na kumbukumbu nzuri ya ziara hii na shauku kubwa ya kurudi tena siku zijazo hii ni ziara yangu ya kwanza nchini Kenya na waahidi haitakuwa ya mwisho. Na kwa maana hiyo ni sebe. Udumu ndugu wa Kenya na Tanzania. Wadumu viongozi wetu. Mungu aibariki Jamhuri ya Kenya. Mungu aibariki Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Na asanteni sana kwa kunisikiliza. Asanteni sana. Aya. <coughs> Kwa heshima wa bunge, bunge la kitaifa na seneti. Mheshimiwa mtukufu rais wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania, speaker wa bunge la taifa, waheshimiwa maseneta, waheshimiwa wa bunge, bunge la taifa, ni wakati sasa wa kuhaidhisha kikao cha seneti kikao cha seneti kuahirishwa hadi kesho Alhamisi tarehe sita Mei mwaka wa elfu mbili na ishirini na moja saa nne asubuhi katika ukumbi wa seneti asanteni sana Excellency your Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Speaker of the Senate, Senator Kenneth Lusaka, Honorable Members of the National Assembly, it is now my pleasure to announce the adjournment of this House until Thursday, May the 6th at 10 a.m. <clears throat>